but I just absolutely adored this movie. I mean, I know everyone's probably saying that to you, but it feels like a really quite a special piece of kind of British filmmaking that I'm hoping is going to keep just being seen by so many people because word of mouth is definitely spreading, but it's, it's a really great film. Oh, thank you. It feels like it felt a really special shoot. So it's really nice that you can be outside of that and, and get what we were doing. Yeah. But um, I'm going to start because I don't want to keep you too long now, now especially now it's your evening time. But um, I just wondered what it was then that attracted you to this to this project. I mean, it is obviously an incredible kind of character and screenplay, but could, you said the shoot was really special. But could you get a sense for how good a project and how good a role this was when you first sort of um, spoke to Claire and read the screenplay? I didn't at first uh, because I spoke to Claire and Emily, the producer, before I'd read the script. Um, and it's one of those that's really hard to explain or to um, put it into words because it, when I finally got to read the script, it was, that was the moment for me that was like, oh, okay, I'm, I can see it. Um, I completely understand Ruth. I can, you know, I think um, there's lots of things that are ambiguous, but it was a, a real gut reaction of going, this is really exciting and I think you can always tell between scripts that you're hooked by and, and that get you and ones that don't um, so this was one that did straight away but then being on set and and the shoot and the crew was so intelligently put together and um, it, it just was magic really when we got together. Yeah, I mean, but what a role this is to get your teeth stuck into. I mean, this is, this, this is if it, from an outside perspective, it feels like a bit of a, a dream character because of all the kind of complexities and stuff that's sort of going on and the internal kind of um, issues that she's facing. If, as, if, as an actress, I mean, you can't, I'm imagining, you can't get many scripts of characters like this, can you? I mean, it, it, was this, did it feel when you're reading it like quite a rarity to have such a fully fleshed kind of character uh, for you to kind of get your teeth stuck into and do you hope now that more roles of this nature are going to be available to you? I think it's one of those that um, I always think it's quite narrow-minded to look at it from an actor because a film so much more than that and I think Claire as well when when you talk to her about um, how she wrote it and you know she never aimed to make that sto story it just naturally happened um, and I think from reading the script, you, you read something like that and, and you're excited by the complexities of it and then you get the job and you go, oh, okay, I've got to do it now. Um, but it, it's that that really feeds you and um, it's a satisfying challenge. Um, so yeah, it, it was a really nice job. Yeah, and what, how is Claire to collaborate with on this? I mean, you know, she's, as for, like I said, I've not spoken to her, but just as a, you can see such an identity in her filmmaking from seeing this. It feels like it's such a, an exciting new voice in this industry. But what sort of filmmaker is she? Is she quite hands-on? Does she give you quite a lot of freedom to access the character yourself? Yeah, she's really, really collaborative um, with every department that she works with as well, which I think is what brought the best out of every department. Um, which is, is really exciting for everyone because everyone wants to do their best work and, and they all came on because they loved the project and, and wanted to do it justice. So um, we were all team Claire. <laughs> um, but she is really hands-on. There's a few scenes in the sea. Um, so the first time that we shot in the sea, they said, okay, Claire, you're going to be on land and it'll be Molly and Elodie, who's this fantastic little actress who's in it. Um, and we all went out to sing <laughs> and Nick, the DOP is like trying to hold the camera steady and, and Claire's just on the shore miles away, not sure what's happening. And then we get back to shore and Claire's in a wetsuit going, I'm coming in. <laughs> and she was straight in and we were all freezing cold, but she was saying, no, it just felt wrong to be apart from you and, and we need to do this together. So, um, yeah, she's definitely an ally and a great director to have, really intelligent. And uh, yeah, as, as sort of days of shooting go, the going into the, the shooting in the sea days, they must have been the ones you, you look forward to least. Because I, 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 like, I like going in, into water, but the sea is really cold, especially in England. So that must have been quite... How, how were those days? Did you manage to fit it all into just like one day and get it out of the way? Or was it something that you had to kind of brave over a succession of days? Um, it felt like a lot of days. Because <laughs> there's, there's the scenes in the sea and then there's scenes in rain as well. Um, so 
yeah it was a lot of getting wet <laughs> but again when you're with a team that are so in it with you um and everyone uh holly the costume designer she was completely on it in terms of right we're keeping you warm and um because some stop shots i couldn't have a wetsuit on but some i could and um she was brilliant so when you're in a team like that um it's it's quite funny to look back on <laughs> and I mean, obviously the character i mean you've got to really access kind of uh, emotions like kind of obsession and, and paranoia that your character does throughout this movie and when we do um display those emotions when we display things like paranoia and obsession they're quite undignified emotions in many ways it's when we kind of let go we, we, we let our guard down and we sort of become maybe a version of ourselves we're not always necessarily proud to, to see so how is it watching this movie back for you because you're kind of watching even though it's it's a character you're watching yourself kind of display in some ways the kind of the the less attractive sides to our demeanor the kind of the, the, the when, when we when we act in ways that yeah we might feel quite embarrassed about in, in real life and I guess you've got to watch yourself display that on screen does it make it quite a hard film to watch as an audience member even though you're technically, it's not you feeling it, it is a character, but is it still, is it still hard to have that disconnect? It's quite, it feels like it's your sister going through it. Um, it feels like, and because we shot two years ago now, um, to watch it now, you kind of, I don't want to spoil, I don't know if I can spoil things or not. Um, as an outsider, you can go, oh, I know exactly what she's going through. I know exactly what she needs to do next. And, um, Whereas when you're in that world, you can't see that. Um, so it's one of those, and I, I love playing Ruth as well, because I think although it, it is the less attractive side of human nature, um, I think her heart's su such in the right place. And um, yeah, it's like watching a young sibling going through it. Was it quite um, an exhausting experience in some ways to be in that emotional headspace every day for a succession of time? And then did you, when, when the shit was over, did you kind of think, did it feel quite kind of freeing to finally be back in your own mind? We just had such a fantastic time that it, it was a really wonderful experience and to be exhausted from a really satisfying challenge and from something that you're passionate about. Um, it was quite sad when it finished because I'd, I'd grown to love Ruth and, and the caravan site that we were on. And, um, and it's quite intense as well that you're, you're living and working on a caravan park with the cast and crew. So when you all have to say goodbye after six weeks of being together, it, it's quite a, a big moment. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And how was it shooting down there? My dad's Cornish, so he, he's... He's very, he's very uh, pleased that this film, and there's a film called Bait, which came out last year, have both come out, and they're both set in Cornwall, and very much about kind of Cornish culture in many ways. So he's just thrilled. He feels like there's this kind of Cornish revolution happening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but how, how was it to shoot down there? How did you find the kind of area? This is mostly just so I can report back to him. But, um, but yeah, what, what, what was it like being in that part of the world for, for a few weeks? I loved it. Um, they all like that answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's completely genuine. It, it's Because yeah, I remember one moment where um, it was myself and a few of the crew members and Claire, and we were sat um, where we have lunch, which was like on the seafront, and the sun was setting and we were talking about different music. And there's um, a song in the film where Joe Quinn, one of the actors, he kind of does a bit of a dance to a song. And we were talking about like, romantic songs and what they mean to us just as the sun was setting like over the Cornish Sea it was lovely. Yeah I, I, I was gonna say actually, I on just on a side note I love the soundtrack to this I thought it was so good um but yeah I was gonna want to do too because obviously the reviews have come out now so this is quite rare I have this opportunity to actually interview um someone from a movie who when it's already kind of been released because usually these interviews take place weeks and stuff in advance but now I've got the benefit of knowing that this film has been so well received I think it was it five stars in the Telegraph I think it got which is an incredible sort of review to get even though you guys were super proud of what you did and you had this incredible time is it always still a surprise when it gets received in that way no, not not in any kind of reflection of, of the work so much but does it still sort of surprise you and and, and make you happy when you realize that it is being received on in the right way and it is getting sort of great sort of um reviews from people yeah absolutely because i think um especially with makeup we had such a nice time that 
you do start to think, oh, have I got rose tinted vision with this? Um, and you can never separate your memories of shooting with the end result. Um, they're always there. So the first time I saw it, I was so proud of it. So kind of, it made me so happy to see it. But then slowly as friends and family have seen it and now critic, it's nice that, you know, everyone's just as excited as I am. Yeah, do you think it's quite a good time for this to be released in a sense that it feels like, you know, films like Makeup and uh, as brilliant as they are, sometimes in the kind of traditional UK release schedule, they get kind of lost sometimes, and especially in the summer when you get all the, this blockbuster season, you know, say there's some, a new Marvel film out and everyone's flocking to see that. And then these, and so films like Makeup can almost sometimes get suffocated in the whole kind of grand scheme of things. But now it feels like everyone's looking for something to watch, do you think it's actually been quite a quite a fortunate sort of timing, sort of an accidental, accidentally fortunate timing for makeup to come out? Because I feel like it's um, hopefully going to have more exposure than it might have been had this come out, say, a year ago. Yeah, it's a funny one because I'm not on that side of things. Um, I think the only thing for me that I feel uh, it's missing is it really is a kind of cinematic film. Um, especially with the landscapes and, and the, um, the use of the sea and, and the soundtrack. It, Claire's put, put everything to, together for cinema um, and very intelligently. So I think it's that as well, because as I found myself in a place of you, you've got so much time on your hands at the minute that you're watching stuff, but having that attention span to be in a film, um, that's something that's quite hard now, at least for me anyway, to keep that. Um, but no, like you say, everyone just wants to see something new. <laughs> <laughs> how, how has your lockdown been for you? I mean, has it, because so, I've been interviewing sort of so many people and, and actors and actresses and filmmakers, and there is a kind of divide between some people that have really just taken this as a chance to do nothing for a bit of time, you know, I mean, because obviously your, your job requires so much traveling. It's actually quite a, a unique chance just to stay kind of still for, for a period of time. But then some people are using it to be really creative and they're writing and they're making short movies and stuff. I'm just wondering sort of how your lockdown's been, if you've which kind of side on that you fall on. Yeah, I think it depends what day you catch me on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think everyone's just taking it day at a time because you do seem to have those little bursts of being really productive and, um, you know, kind of being creative and, and then you have to, the next few days where you're not at all and um yeah it just seems to have gone on for a long time <laughs> doesn't right. it <laughs> although i've got my first screening tomorrow so i feel like nature yeah. is slowly healing yeah, in an actual cinema so that's quite quite exciting um, oh it's called an american pickle is seth rogan wakes up in new york having pickled himself in a factory 100 years ago and now he wakes up in modern day new york it sounds really stupid but kind of like the sort of thing i quite like to see as my first film back yeah. um but i was going to ask as well because um obviously from telling from your accent you're part you're from a part of the uk which has been behind such brilliant art of late in terms of like it's been in film you know if you look at the kind of shane meadows uh, collective and vicky mcclure and people like that and i was just wondering about if that's is that just coincidental do you think this talent the, this pool of talent is nationwide or is there some is are there really good kind of uh, drama schools and, and, and kind of good initiatives where in, in your kind of local area where you grow up or or do you think this talent is just everywhere and it just happens to be a spotlight there because it does seem like people from your sort of neck of the woods in uh, of some is creating some brilliant artistic voices over the last kind of 20 years and I just wondered if if you think that's a coincidence or not. Um, for me I started a, a drama group in Nottingham called the Talent First organisation and I was really lucky that I found them because I didn't like acting, I didn't like drama. And then I ended up going to one of their sessions sort of with a friend and um, and the whole sort of TV and film acting and um, the kind of psychology side of it and, you know, doing improvs and reacting to people. Um, that was something that I'd not experienced at school with drama. Um, so I was really lucky that I found them and, and what they do is really incredible and in that they lift the fees as much as possible and have a really select group of young actors um, kind of putting the talent first. So I was really lucky that I found myself there and worked with other amazing actors that kind of inspired me and um, 
they sort of looked after me when I was younger and, and led me to my first job and to an agent when I was a bit older. And I feel really lucky that they sort of protected me and introduced me to the industry in such a good way. My last one is just about what's next, really. Have you got any kind of projects underway? Or I mean, obviously not at the moment because of the lockdown, but like sort of have you got anything kind of in the pipeline that you're hoping to, to start or resume when things go back to normal? Uh, there's nothing that I'm holding my breath for. I kind of think don't believe a job until you're on set on the first day. Um, so we'll wait and see. Yeah, but it's been lovely to speak to you and best of luck with the release and stuff. And hopefully, um, yeah, I was going to say if there was a makeup too, like if there was a sequel, <laughs> then there could be a, a, junket, a, a junket in real life. But, um, but until then, thanks so much. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon one day. Bye-bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching... Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.